What's up, people? It is Dave Duncan Kyle back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. For this review, Duncan Kyle and I have been checking out the new album from Denver Quartet, Abrams. The band's new album, In the Dark, will be released on September 9th via Small Stone Records. So, um, initially seeking to fuse melodic hooks with dissonance, Abrams began in 2013 in Denver, Colorado, with guitarist-vocalist Zach Amster and bassist-vocalist Taylor Everson. Later joined by drummer Ryan DeWitt, Abrams have released an EP and three studio albums, all to critical acclaim. With each release, the listener can hear the band evolving and maturing to what has it's become today, a band dedicated to compelling songwriting and energetic live performances. Um, adding Patrick Alberts from Call of the Void to the lineup, In the Dark serves as Abrams' first release as a four piece, following behind 2020's Modern Ways. With the pandemic cancelling all touring plans for Modern, Modern Ways, Abrams immediately got to work demoing more than 25 plus songs for their next release. Given the world was in lockdown, Amster took a deep dive to learn the ins and outs of home recording to refine song structure with a hyper-focus put on vocal hooks. There was a goal set to have as complete and polished songs as possible prior to entering the studio in summer 2021 with producer, engineer and collaborator Dave Otero at Flatline Audio, who was the last piece in shaping the final soundscape. So, Abrams, gentlemen. Um, one of us here was... Fairly excited about this. We the kids call it cock a hoop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, you did a you did a lot of chatting about modern ways back in yeah. twenty twenty, Duncan. Yes. Um, I believe you did mention it in your top twenty of the year that year. I made my top twenty. Yeah, I think yep. it's a fucking incredible album. Yep. I also said at the time that I felt incredibly sorry for them because they released an amazing album that should have been toured right at the point where no one was touring. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> True that. Um, so I will, I'll let you take the floor because you were a big fan of these guys. Um, what did you think? What did you make of In the Dark? Yeah, I think the I was very surprised that the I'm just what's just overjoyed, but <laughs> very very surprised when you had mentioned. I think you sent me a message with a link to their new song mm. um, ahead of their the kind of uh, on their Bandcamp page ahead of the, the the album release. And at the time, I was. I don't know, I kind of felt a little bit like, oh, we've got something new. I was like, I, I, like, Modern Ways to me is an album which, when I heard it the first time, I remember it coming through and I heard it the first time, and I was like, this is kind of cool. And I don't, I don't think I listened to it again for like a month. Hmm. And then for whatever reason, it, it, like, it came back up uh, and played it again. And instantly on the second listen, I was like, oh, this is fucking cool as fuck. And I don't know what it was about that first listen that just didn't draw me in. Hmm. But on the second listen, I was like, this is just, this is just really, really, really well written. Like the songs are like the backbone of the band, these big guitars, lush bass, cool rhythms, and then vocals, which I could, oh, this guy could just sing to me all day and it'd be <laughs> over the fucking moon. Like honestly, one of my, he was one of my favorite vocalists that year. Um, and so I, I kind of wanted that tour though. I wanted a Modern Ways tour. Yeah. So it's kind of bittersweet in that I'm not going to get a Modern Ways tour. Uh, hopefully I get an In The Dark tour. But you know, they're, they're back and there's not a lot of time between, I think that some bands have rushed into doing second albums during lockdown that have resulted in not a lot of growth or too much growth. So like it's like there's there's either it just seems like what you did before you know it seems like almost like B sides or the other side of that where I'm like well you've had far too much time to sit and craft what we mentioned soil work recently and my mm. my overriding feeling on that one is you had too much time to work on that album like it's so grandiose that it's at the point where I'm like there's too many elements going on here there's too many song like changes and all the rest so I was super curious to hear what in the dark feels like and it's basically a laser pointed modern ways it kind of feels like modern ways is an amazing album but there's one or two tracks in it that i felt were fillerish right mm. but i love the album oh like the vocally it was still amazing in the dark just feels like a more refined version of that it almost feels like they were like that well this is all the stuff that worked on the previous album more <laughs> um and that's kind of why 
I, I, I love it as much as I do. And I played this already to death, mostly because I think it has that rare ability of, and once again, chiefly done by the vocals, but that rare ability of having a vocalist that has a very distinctive tone, a very mm-hmm. unique way of singing, because uh, it kind of always feels a little bit smoky and raspy, but the mm. melody is so smooth. It's like mm-hmm. ridiculously fucking smooth that when you hear it, you just like, there's something that there's a quality is the word. There's a quality about the vocals. that's just, it's really engaging. And then you add on the top of that, this guy can just pull hooks at his hoop. <laughs> like, honestly, like every yeah. song, every single song, has a chorus hook that I'm just like, oh my good, it just sounds lush and warm and vibrant and engaging and it makes you want to sing even if you can't, don't do it in the shower because your cats are going to make noises. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's that level. And like I say, if that was all I was talking about was how great the vocals were in this album, then it would still score high because it's an amazing quality. And then you have the rest of the sound. This band do not let up and that's what I kind of love about them. The, there's a thickness in the tone between the guitars and the bass, mm-hmm. um, especially the like you get like a lot of kind of lead work in the background. You're just like things that are just like pushing the melody and these really really cool chord progressions that just allow this dude to do what he does. Once again, if you have great bass and you have great guitars and an amazing vocalist, you're doing really well. You're gonna score really high. But then the drummer comes in, and then the drummer is just this solid backbone to everything. Mm. Whoever produced this album, buy my paint. Mm. Like this is this is pitch point perfect production for a band like this. I can make out absolutely everything. It's thick, it's warm. And so it's not like it's not doing the let's push towards the clinical precision to make it heavier, but it's also not doing the let's kind of strip out some of the bass tones to make it more radio friendly. Abrams could be an incredibly radio-friendly band if they wanted to, but they never really lose that sharpness. Even mm. at the even at the bits where they're hitting more of the the kind of the, not ballads, but certainly the the softer moments of the album, there's always that there's always that grit behind the guitars that's always there. It's like always kind of threatening to make an appearance, even if it doesn't predominantly in a track. It's still there. Um, the debate is still raging on as to, and I was speaking to Dave about this last night track 2, Death Tripper uh, over the chorus, I am convinced there's brass in the background and I'm, 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 I'm convinced I'm like, at this point now I'm fucking, all my chips are in and pushed across the table, that there's a brass instrument, if it's the guitar I don't know what effect he's using on it, but it's this kind of kind of like noise that's coming in over it and it sounds fucking amazing the album weirdly follows, in a lot of respects, the the kind of song placement and structure of uh, Modern Ways, and that you know it hits you with like a couple of bangers right up front. You get all the catches and all the hooks. Mm. Goes off and gets a little bit more not dreamy, but a bit more roomy and a bit yep. more it like relaxes you in, and then kind of starts to focus things up back towards the end, and then closes it with the longest track, which I think clocks in about six and a half minutes in length. Uh, once again, doesn't feel an iota of its six and a half minutes in length, but allows the band to just kind of feel things out. I think In The Dark is like, it is a step up from a band that didn't need to step up, to be honest. Like, they, they hadn't had enough time in between the previous release and this release and tours and all the rest to merit, like, a, a kind of a, a refinement in this form. Mm-hmm. Um... I really like this album. I think this album is really, 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 really fucking good. I think this is an album that will, sadly, uh, if anyone has listened to some of the other reviews we've done in this session, is going to fly under the radar for almost everyone. And that is criminally, criminally a disgrace, an indictment against how music works. Because this, to me, um, side by side with the uh, uh, well, we won't mention the band's name because I'm not mentioning the band's name. The other album that I had to listen to, which was a good what, f- like twenty minutes longer than this, doesn't hold a candle to this at all. This is really, really good, really well placed, well written, uh, and well recorded. Fucking music, man! I, I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get enough of it. I like, this is the sort of band that you are genuinely excited them 
to get their audience, like to, to, to get that break, which they totally could mm. if people supported them, if people push them and people talk about them. This is a band that could be on the precipice of of a much larger audience um, without them needing, to, they have not compromised one thing on that previous album at mm. all. All they've done is focused it. And I kind of love it about that. Yeah, so uh, I am all in on in the dark. I think it is a I think it is a great album by a great criminally underlistened band, and I will be singing its praises very much the same way I was spring, uh, singing the praises of Modern Ways two mm. years ago. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I I enjoyed Modern Ways. Um, I thought it was a, a really solid album, um, and I kind of just I mean I, I, I didn't end on my end of year list or anything like that, but I, th- I still still enjoyed the listen. So I didn't really go into this with any like expectations or anything like that. But um, this this album is an absolute earworm of an album. Mm. Um, on my first listen, I was like, oh, this is this is pretty good. This is like I, 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 on first listen, I was like, this is probably as good as as Modern Ways. Um, on further listens though this album overtakes modern ways in yeah. my opinion um i i feel like they they have captured a lot of the stuff from modern ways but i feel like they've leaned a little bit more into the the kind of ethereal side of their sound um they're playing with a, a bit more a bit more of a kind of cinematic um a little bit more kind of brooding kind of sound on this album um and to me that just kind of elevates it to that next level you know um, what it reminds me of no um, no, you wouldn't, because we haven't spoken about <laughs> uh, it. reminds me of, you know, um, he's legend. Oh, Duncan, you're stealing my fucking thunder, man. Oh, fuck, sorry, man. I'm just get into that. <laughs> it's one mind, then. Fuck's sake. It's one mind. Son of a bitch. Like, um, like, Dave, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Dimmu Borgu. Uh, <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> there interesting. we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you've got... Um, sorry. You've, it's all right. Um, you've got... You've still got like there's still elements here that are like oh that's a little bit like torch um or i i was picking up a little bit of um i remember touch fuzzy get dizzy there's a, a little oh, bit yeah, of man. that in there as well yep. but it's, it's kind of it's mixed with this like kind of ghostly almost kind of like elephant tree meets um like a kind of somali yacht club type atmosphere and the balance on this is just immense um i i, I really like the fact they opened the album with one of the heavier tracks yeah. of the album um, it just delivers that kind of like it's got a real kind of stomping groove. Those the riffs are huge, and it's got an absolutely just awesome kind of catchy vocal hook. But the one thing that kind of blew my mind about that first track is the, the guitar tone on that mm. track. Right now, if you listen to this guitar tone, it's it's sludgy, it's thick, but it's got almost it's like a it's almost got like a Boss HM2 kind of like crunched it right and 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 that just sounds fu- on, on paper you'll just be like what like and it doesn't sound like i'm not saying it sounds like entombed or anything like that but the, the kind of blend they've got of that kind of crunch along with a kind of kind of stoner kind of sludge vibe it's really cool um and then i was thinking about it i was like wait a minute this is this is produced by dave otero now weirdly very weirdly last week I interviewed Josh Elmore from Cattle Decapitation in Glasgow. They were in mm-hmm. on UK tour. Spoke to them in uh, in Glasgow in the Cat House and discussed like their new album, who they're working with, Dave Otero, um, who also did the, the previous three albums um, before that one. So he's he's done the last four, like including this, the new one, the four last four Cattle Decap albums, um, and there's more details on that interview if you want to check out on our YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> So, uh, ah, amazing. I'll plug there. Um, so he's used to working with heavy bands. Yeah. So it's it's really cool to hear that like kind of amalgamation of sounds, almost kind of like bleeding into this album just a little bit. Even if it's just like a small thing, like a little bit on the guitar tone. Yeah. Um, but he's also worked with bands like Chemist as well. So like he, he's very well rounded, and this type of stuff will also come very naturally to him in, in the production seat. But he's done a fucking stellar job on this yeah. one. The sound of this album is just awesome it's it's polished and it's weighty but it's just got a really nice kind of warm natural texture and tone to it nothing sounds plastic or processed it just yeah very organic um and as this style should be um and i think this album for me it just it, it took me through some some 
more interest in colours than I mean, it's used a slightly different, bigger palette than modern ways for me. I thought yeah. there was a little bit more variance in tempo and the intensity, um, and the styles. You know, like that mix of styles is really rewarding to listen to. I think tracks like Better Living, for example, just they just get like corkscrewed into your head. A couple of listens, and it's just in there. Um, but with that like big kind of roomy production, it just it, it gives that type tracks like that just a you know a bigger kind of lease on life. Um, and as as much as I love this band when they're they're kind of like they're just you know groovy like an old time movie. Some of their <laughs> some of them more some of them more like rock or more kind of like uh. alternative moments. They're really addictive. Now this next statement I'm going to make. I'm sorry, I don't mean to piss the band off, but. There's a, there's a couple of hooks on this, right? There's one on um, Body Pillow. It's a wee bit Foo Fighters-ish. Like, there's a little bit of a Foo Fighters vibe on that track, and I was like, oh! And now it's now it's not like like ripped off a, a, a Foo Fighters track. There's a kind of like, almost like a kind of shoegazy type ambience to it as well, but there's a little bit in there in the background, and I heard it a couple of times. Um, to, again, if you take like the Foo Fighters and mix them with like a band like Nothing, it just, it, mm. there's a kind of balance there, but it, it's really cool. Um, you know, tracks like In the Dark as well have a very, very cool light and shade musically. It's very dreamlike. Um, but I have to agree with what Duncan said. The vocals on this album are just impeccable. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. And this is this is where the, the He Is Legend thing came for me. It's, it's you know, his voice is quite commanding when it needs to be, but he's also quite soulful and quite nuanced as well. Great texture. And there was moments I was listening to the album and I was like, oh, that sounds like someone. And I, I couldn't for the life of me think who it was. And I listened to, there's certain lines in the album, I, I rewound them and I listened to them over and over and over. Because it was just like, it was in my head. I was like, who did it sound like? And then it hit me. It was Skylar from He Is Legend. Yeah. The, the two voices have a, a very kind of similar tonality to them at times. Um, but then there's times where he just sounds like he's his own self. Like he doesn't sound like anybody else. But there's moments on it, I was like, ah, that's very He Is Legend. But really cool um i think his voice is exceptional it reminded um, me like that, that those elements particularly especially with what the guitars are doing um it hates you the yeah. he's legend album yeah. has those moments where probably more than anything they've ever done that really go into those kind of dreamy kind of roomy elements mm. which are on here yep. it's just like abrams doesn't really have that southern bent that they have but yeah, it's yeah. difficult. Like I, I'm the same as you. Like I didn't. Like, it doesn't sound like that in the, on modern ways, but on this listen, I was like, "Wait, wait a second! <laughs> is there a is there a saxophone on this track? And is the He's Legend singer in here? Um, if you yeah. are the band, by the way, and you are checking this out, go and please like." Like, unless Dave has the answer, go and tell me if there's brass playing in the back of track two, Death Tripper. <laughs> it's it's driving me up though. It's like, I'm, it's not just me. I know you made this up. I I never I never really noticed it to be honest. Oh for fuck's sake, Dave! Um, I'm pretty sure it's a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. So I could be look, wrong. I've been wrong before. I had a look online, but I couldn't see anything about any oh, like. It would be weird if it was only brass. on one song and yeah. only on one wee bit. Um, <laughs> so it's probably a guitar, but. Yeah. Just, just to finish off for me, this this album just gets better and better every listen. Um, I, I was in on the first listen, but three and four listens in, I was completely hooked. Yeah. Um, I can see myself revisiting this album quite a lot this year, probably more than, than Modern Ways. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Kyle, what about yourself? Uh, I'd never heard of Brahms before, Abrams, however you want to say it. Uh, and I listened to this album. I hate it. Because uh, like we're used to this now, we're well, used yep. to this now. No, we're like, close. I just like the look on your face. Because I had my top ten list fucking set, and this is going to invade it. <laughs> <laughs> How dare they just oh, so late in the year, and they're just like, nah, fuck your top ten list. <laughs> fuck you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bet you're glad we... that we do a top twenty at the end of the year, Kyle. <laughs> so you're not losing yeah. anything really. Yeah. Well, you are, fucking hell. Fuck it. I'm already Happy stressing about that, and this has just added more to the fire. I, just, I mean, there's not much more to say what you guys haven't already said, except for the album cover is fucking badass. I love that album cover to yep. pieces. It's mm. amazing. It's so simple, but so striking. I really love it. When I saw it, I was like, oh, that's different. I like it. But the production, I know you guys yeah, are but that on that. Oh, that yeah, but that on. bass tone, man. It's, the <laughs> fir- it's like the first thing. It just says bass in my notes yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> How do you want your bass sounding? Bass. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure we have a like preset it. somewhere for that. Yep. Put that through a transformer and <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just I don't believe this. Yeah, you're right. This is a this is a perfect production. This is what a perfect production sounds like. It sounds like the band should sound. It's not plastic. Mm. It's not edited. It's not stuck to the grid. It's Clearly, there's a metronome involved, but I mean, most bands need a metronome because that's what they were designed for. Yeah. But like, holy fucking shit. This is just the best sounding album of the entire year. Mm. It really is. And we've had a lot of incredible sounding albums this year. But this yeah. one is just, I've, I've listened to it a hundred times. I must have, and I'm just going, how do you get it sounding so dirty, but so clear? Yeah. It's just so good, especially in the bass. <laughs> the bass, the bass. <laughs> and what I really liked was there's some solos and lead stuff here, but it's super tasteful. It's not like mm. wanky fucking shredding all the time. It's like here's a bit of a lead and it's done. Like wow, loved it. Really mm. love that. Of course, all the other stuff you guys said is true as well. But I, th those things really stuck out to me. Just incredible bass, incredible voice. The dude's voice, yeah, like Dan said. So it's just like, uh, huh? If I could sing like that, I would never speak. I would only sing. I'd be on the phone with the insurance company singing to them. They'd be like, please, sir. Leave it. <laughs> so, yeah, hate and love it at the same time for the same reason. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so um, ratings for the new album from Abrams in the Dark. Um, Duncan, what are you thinking score wise? So, Modern Way's got a 4.5 for me, which is Ooh. why it made its way onto the end of year list. Um, and this is better than that. I'd like this is an album I will come back to loads. I know, I know, I will. It's it's so engaging and so inviting and comforting. It's mm. a really this is like chicken soup for the soul sort of album. You know, like I can any mood, I'll be able to listen to this, and it will. I think it's it's quality and its power. Uh, the quality. I keep coming back to. There's a quality about this album. Mm that just invites you as a listener to, to spend more time with it. So it's a five. I think Ooh. this is, there ain't nothing on this I would five. change. I think, nice. like yourself, Dave, I think the mo we spoke about this at the Cattle Decap gig and I said to you, I've listened to the first four songs I think I'd listened to at that point. Mm. And I was like that, it sounds really fucking good. Like mm. I, I was I was already buzzing about it and my fear was, what's the rest of the album going to sound like? And it delivered everything I wanted, um, and it continues to. Every time I listen to it, I, I weirdly change my allegiances to my favourite songs. Like, every listen, I'm like, no, this is my favourite song, listen to that melody. Mm. Oh, no, this is this is my favourite song, listen to that riff. Uh, no, this is my favourite song, uh, listen to that <laughs> drum hook. I never said that, never will, Dave. Um, so, no, it's a, it's a five. I think this is a nice. fucking great album. And I really hope, I really hope that you, as a listener out there, Fucking go and check it out. Um, Abrams deserve to be huge, um, and hopefully they'll get there. Yeah, nice, nice one. Um, I'm marginally below you, four point five for me on this one. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's a clear step up from the last album, which I still enjoyed as well. But I think um, everything just sounds. I just say it's more refined, but I like the way they've just expanded certain things, and the, the sound of the album, the production is is really really nice. A uh, great job from David Terrell. Uh, Kyle, what are you thinking? I might award this another banana. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh Dave's going to have to get the animations out. I kept it. I kept it just in case. Hey, good. In that case, five out of five and a banana. Oh, because a banana. Fuck me, this album took me by surprise. Like a band I'd never heard of. But I heard, I've heard you guys talk, talk about them before, so I kind of knew. Thought like. Okay, it's going to be good, but I didn't expect it to be this mind-blowingly fucking good. Mm. Like, we've had a lot of amazing albums this year, but this is good in such a different way because it's nothing like the other albums I've scored five for, yeah. but yeah. it is just that fucking good. So, yep. Nice. Bananas all around. There we go. Nice. Um, so that is Abrams in the Dark. Um, comes out on September 9th on Small Stone Records. Uh, links below to the band, to their band camp. Um, check them out. Let us know what Please you think. Please check them out. Please, Please check them out. Yeah, definitely check this one out. Um, let us know your thoughts. Stick some comments in once you've checked it out. Happy to hear your thoughts and opinions on it. That is the review. Thank you for checking it out. Uh, we'll be back with another review very soon, but until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.